what is it like to read a story or watch a story where the characters are unlikable? We have a lot of examples, right? We we have Breaking Bad, right? And Walter White, which is one of the biggest examples right now. We have Tony Soprano. There's a lot of anti-heroes, villains that we have stories about. But what makes them compelling? Is it because they're evil? Or maybe we're hoping, just maybe, just maybe they will turn around. I'm going to talk about one particular manga that really captivated me. And I think this manga will never, ever become an anime. Because the subject matter is just too depressing. It might become a live action, but as an anime, uh, I really doubt it. But in my personal opinion, that's a damn shame. Because this is great storytelling because what we have here is a cast of characters that are so broken so abusive to each other that at first glance you just want them to leave each other but I believe it really says something that the author has managed to create a, such a great dynamic among the cast that Somehow, you just root for them. Little by little, you're just rooting for them. So this manga is called, Is the Family Like This Worth Keeping? And honestly, that title is accurate. Because it's really, it's about a family and at first glance, it's just too difficult to watch. Right? In fact, if you look at all the discussion online about this manga, a lot of hate is going into what the wife is doing. So, like, let's let, let's let's step back. What is this? What is this anime about? This is about the story of a family, of Reitero, the husband, Kazumi, the wife, and their daughter Ichika. And when we start the series, we notice some very very strange things about. Them. Specifically, Reitero is not allowed at certain parts of the house. There is literally a piece of tape that sets a boundary that he's not allowed to enter by the wife, Kazumi. In fact, Kazumi also has instructions for him not to talk to them, not to greet them, not to interact with them. And other, a bunch of things are happening. And it's, at first glance, all you can think about is... This is domestic abuse. And this is not just me analyzing it and interpreting it as such. As such, The manga straight out says, is this abuse? Because a lot of, cast, of the cast, a lot of the characters are asking, what's happening here? So, you'd think that Reitaro, the husband, is in a very, very dark spot considering that he is lonely in his own home. When both the wife and the daughter don't even talk to him. And then, as you go along, we see even a sadder situation. We realize that Reitaro himself has difficulty talking to other people. Um, maybe he's autistic. That's just a speculation on my part. But the point is, he has a difficult time expressing himself. In fact, he can often just express himself through riddles which he puts online and he has some semi-famous status as a, as a guy who as his content is giving riddles and that seems to be the setup for this very captivating story because it, again if you look at the, the, the online talk a lot of hate is going to the wife because what the hell is she doing to the husband why is she doing it to the husband uh, I'm not going to spoil it but let's just say it, there's a deeper nuanced situation here of how this family has reached this point. A very, very broken family. So, again, the question is why, if this is such a case, why are they not splitting up? Why isn't the husband, Reitaro, asking for a divorce? Why isn't Kazumi asking for a divorce? Why are they staying like this for years? And then the question of, of the title, is a family like this worth keeping, suddenly takes on a very, very different uh, interpretation. So 
you, you think that the, the central question of the story is how long before the, the family finally breaks? Or are they finally going to figure out a way around it? But no. The question really is why is it worth keeping? Because that's one of the most profound things about this is because the, in Raytheros' eyes, it's worth it. The, the abuse he, he, he endures is worth it. Kazumi, despite her rage at her husband, also refuses to leave him. Somehow, it's worth it for her. And the daughter, who is obviously getting all get, getting so much trauma out of this situation, also seems reluctant to convince her family to split up. So now suddenly the story is not about whether they're going to make it or whether they're going to split up. But the question is, why does the family feel this way? And we get that as the story continues. So, and to me, to me as a manga reader, this captivated me. And I really feel that for the most part, the online fandom has missed a lot of that. Because every time I go on online, when people start talking about this manga, it's all about, oh, the guy is, uh, is so weak, or I have no sympathy for the wife. I think the people are missing the point. The point, of this, in my opinion, of this manga is what's happening. We, it's about understanding. Why is it that this family is worth keeping? And slowly, as the chapters open up, as more of the of the trauma is unveiled and more of the actions of the family comes in, here's the thing. Little by little, you actually start to root for them. Maybe not condone it, but you start to root for them and understand. Rater, for example, we, we we feel bad for him initially, and we do feel bad about his ability his basic weakness of not being able to communicate well and yet he stays along because he he in his eyes claims that he alone understands his wife and that's why he stays he stays because no one else understands his wife but he do kazumi too ha, has so much rage for her husband and yet she can't let go of him she can't let go of the fact that despite all the pain and hurt she feels, all the anger she feels to her husband, she still can't help but remember all the goodness and compassion Raytheon has given him, her. Ichika, the daughter, is slowly also to under getting to understand her family more rather than just resenting them for their lack of communication and the fact that they're so broken I mean really it's really it, it fascinates me how so broken these this these people this family is and yet the author the author Murayama Wataru has really hooked me and made me made me to sit down and listen to them suddenly these people who are either very broken or very villainized, are suddenly, I dare say, human? So, as the story goes along, we are introduced to more characters, like supporting casts that, in a way, are, out, are just like us. Outsiders looking in, observing this family, and wondering why the hell they choose to stay together. Why doesn't Raytheon just leave her abusive wife, his abusive wife? Why doesn't Kasumi divorce her husband that she clearly can't stand to be around? And why does Ichika, despite all the support she's getting, chooses her family again and again? It's, it's kind of ingenious how the, the story lets us see this, this from the opinions of the people around him. And the funny thing about it is these characters are also set up as, I dare say, solutions. So take, for example, the character of Sayako. Uh, uh, basically, uh, a mother and cam girl, I guess. At least the way the, the although that part of her characteristics is, is kind of dropped almost immediately. Um, who befriends Reitaro and, well, ends up falling in love with him and wants to be with him. And yet, 
she can't seem to, to understand or why he chooses to be with his wife, Kazumi, who abuses him rather than her, who continues to show him support. And and this is why a lot of the fandom, or at least the people who read this manga, are wondering why the hell he doesn't leave Kazumi for Sayako. Because Sayako is portrayed, genuinely so, as a character who is compassionate, empathetic, kind, and very, very supportive of Reitero. Except, but the thing is, Reitero never considers her as a love interest. Which I think is kind of like a subversion because the author puts her there because as sort of, I guess, an alt- you think that she, she's there as a sort of alternative and that maybe to show Reitero that he, he has to leave Kazumi for a, a more supportive partner. And yet, that's not the case. Somehow, the author portrays Sayako instead as an obstacle that Reitero has to overcome to stay with his family. Which is such a strange thing because Cycle is generally not a villain. Genuinely so. She's a genuinely kind person. And yet through her eyes, we get to see exactly who Reitero is. Because especially initially, Ray, she just looks at Reitero with pity. And she just so desperately wants to help him out. And cannot understand why he, he keeps gently rebuffing her. But slowly, little by little, she sees them. And maybe I just starts to understand them just little by little. And then we have Hikari, Sayako's son, who ends up betr- uh, uh, befriending Ichika in school. And, you know, you get a lot of uh, viewpoints of him. He's, he's either the friend or the crush or whatever the case is. He's very, very angry because in his eyes... Ichika's family, particularly her father, is making her childhood insufferable. He, she fi- he finds his uh, Ichika's father and wife, to a certain extent, weak. And he's so angry that they're making their daughter, her, his friend, suffer. But yet, also through his eyes... He can't seem to understand why Ichika still views Reitero in a positive light. Still views his her mom in a positive light. She still loves them despite their flaws. And his own arc, just like his mom, is about understanding this family. Finally, there's Ogino, the teacher of Ichika. Just as Sayako is introduced as a sort of pseudo-love interest, love rival for the husband Ogino the school teacher he's kind of portrayed as a potential love interest for Kazumi but also he's there as I guess a very cold objective clinical look at the relationship because the way Ogino looks at them he clearly sees that there's something wrong with the family and he sees it as an academic professor or a doctor would something to be cured something to be fixed because Apparently, that's my job as a teacher. And yet, he's so baffled, just like everyone else, why not, everything is moving the way it is and why somehow, somehow, through it all, the chaos, the pain, and suffering and trauma, the family of Reitaro, Kazumi, and Ichika keeps chugging along. In fact, all, all these supporting characters look at them and somehow, just like the audience, we're wonder- wondering to ourselves, is it improving? Are they actually healing? And then, which goes to the second problem of how the audience and the, all the supporting cast view them. They start to ask themselves, wait, should they even be healing? Because then we'd start to realize what the author is truly trying to say. What the author is trying to say is everybody, everybody in the in universe and out of universe, the other supporting casts and the fandom all believe that the right thing to do is for them to split. Me, as the author, let me show you that the actual real answer is for them to stay together.
And then you, it hits you. This is the author's challenge. So there's this scene in the, in the latter parts of the book where, for one reason or another, Ray Taro is forced to sleep in the floor because he has no other place to sleep. It's very pathetic to see. And it's a, you know, it's a good way of showing that this is where his life is. And Kazumi and sees him, and you see a hint of regret, and asks her husband, are you planning to sleep in that cold floor? Why don't you sleep in a room? Sleep in the, in the bed here. And this is very significant because you have to remember, he's, Retaro, Retaro is basically banned from that section or the territory in, in their home. He's not supposed to be there, at least in the rules that were set. So the fact that her, his wife is finally letting them, him sleep in a bed next to her is quite, fa- you know, it's, it's a big step, right? And you can see that it, for Kazumi, she sees it as a big step too towards reconciliation. That she's finally allowing her husband to sleep in the same room as her. So Raytaro enters. And you could tell from the from the facial expression of Kazumi that she's embarrassed. She's blushing. She doesn't know what to do. She's lived so long in anger and rage for her husband. And now her husband is sleeping but right beside her. And she's trying to figure out what to say. She wants to open up to him. She wants to understand him. She wants to bridge the gap. But she's unable to. She's just afraid. And at that moment, Reitero gets a panic attack. He can't sleep. He's struggling to sleep. His panic attack gets worse and worse. Then he gets up and leaves. Why? As he explains to Kazumi, He's so traumatized with abuse. He remembers when Kazumi threw a glass uh, pitcher at him. And he just tells her, not coldly, not maliciously, not in anger, but just matter-of-factly, he says, I feel safer and more comforted sleeping on the floor than I am right beside you and then he leaves and the look in Kazumi's face is painful and heartbreaking maybe a bit cathartic to the people who wish her karma uh, karma against her but it's just painful to watch to watch her really try to bridge the gap but realizing that the situation now is so dire that it might not just be as simple as talking to her husband. This is such a memorable scene for me. So what do I mean by author's challenge? Often, well, maybe often, maybe not, but some authors definitely, they would they would deliberately write themselves in a corner, corner or set a limitation and they want to see, or at least want to see if they're skilled enough as a writer can I make this story work despite all these limitations? Sometimes you can see that, uh, for example, in Game of Thrones, when George R. R. Martin writes a bunch of very unlikable characters and the question starts to arise, can I write them little by little to become sympathetic? Or maybe you write yourself into a corner in terms of what the problem is and you start the readers start to ask, can they solve this issue? Can they save the world despite everything? This is a very risky way of writing story because it's very easy to write badly. Because if you set impossible situations and you try to solve it without being clever, without making it make sense, you can be accused of deus ex machina. And very few writers can pull it off. Now, 
is a family like this worth keeping is a manga that tries to do the same thing. We have a bunch of characters who are so broken that everybody in the in the community of readers, everybody in the cast outside the family all think they should split up. The story is still ongoing, so we don't know. But for me, it's kind of compelling watching this uh, the author just try little by little make you understand this family make you maybe not condone condone the abuse and lack of communication but understand it and somehow rather than condemn them root for them it kind of is and, and for me it's a very very interesting question to tell in this day and age particularly in an age of cancel culture now let me don't get me wrong i'm not saying cancel culture is wrong or that you know that some that some of the people being canceled deserve it or not but we live in a culture or at least in the current times where forgiveness is a lot less acceptable of a solution that maybe just maybe conflict resolution can work because really if you look at the situation of the family in this case in let's be honest if this happens on twitter we would have been canceling what the husband or the wife or both with what's happening and that's really what's happening when you're looking at the uh, discussion boards and forums and tweets about this series it looks that way and yet the author is deftly writing it little by little making you understand it's a very very treacherous path full of stumbles and heartbreak but as the chapters go on this family against all all odds, seems to be healing, despite it all. And before people look at this and and dismiss it and say, the villain is winning, the challenge really here is, can we stop looking at the characters as villains or awful people, but rather just human, human beings who stumble, who break, but very much wanting to get up and heal. And it becomes a question of, is a family like this worth keeping? In the beginning, we all think no. F no. But Murayama Wataru, the author and artist, looks at this and says, hold on, before you cancel them, before you condemn them, let's hear them out first. Let's see what happens. Maybe, just maybe, this is a family worth keeping. We get a moment with Ichika and Kazumi where Kazumi, as the mom is excited when she finds out that her daughter is being invited to play the princess of a very play. I'm not sure if it's a princess or any kind, but basically, she's happy that she's going to be interacting with her classmates, that she will have a very important role in the school play. But Ichika doesn't even want to leave her room. She doesn't want to interact with her classmates. And as she tries together to open up and you know be happy that she has friends and people and the support network and a play that she can build memories with but Ichika remains close and unable to talk to her mom and all the kindness in Kazumi you could see it that desperately trying to get to reach out to her daughter it suddenly breaks and she bursts in anger. Why can't you be normal? Why don't you want this? Any girl would love to be to play the role you're going to be playing. Any girl would love to have the popularity you're getting. But why don't you? Why won't you be normal? It's such a heartbreaking scene because it's such an awful thing to say to your daughter. And at first glance, you'd maybe want to hate her for saying that 
but the look on her face is that of desperation, not evil. She clearly is bothered by it. And she clearly is holding some sort of mental anguish because of what's happening. And she cannot help but lash out. She just lashes out. And even for me, rather than hating her, I feel sorry for her. And I just want to wish her well. And I mean that she be cured. Because it's not that she doesn't realize that her family is br breaking apart because of her, her, her anger issues. She knows it. She knows she's driving her daughter away. But she can't help herself. And it's breaking her because she knows that she can't help herself. What's really the actual theme of this story? Well, this is just my opinion, but I think the primary theme of this story is communication and how we all as human beings struggle to communicate with each other. Because let's be honest, that's how most problems are solved. Open communication, attempting to understand and empathize with the other party while also listening to them and hoping that they will empathize with you as well. Because at its heart, if you look at the problems that they have, yes, there's abuse, there's problems, there's, you know, there's break, there are breaking points. But at the end of the day, if you look at Reitero, the husband, he has difficulty communicating, but he can. He just has a different way of communicating. And which is why I feel that that even though there's they, they, don't, they never explicitly say it, I do think that he has some sort of autism there uh, in the spectrum because of the way he tries to communicate via puzzles. The wife may seem really, really evil in, the, in, in her anger and her, and her lack of empathy and her, you know, very annoying uh, uh, tendencies to make wild assumptions, very negative ones. But you can also clearly see that she's hurt, that she's angry, and she's trying so hard to drop that anger. She's trying so hard to understand but her emotions get in the way which again tells me that she has her own emotional issues maybe she's bipolar I don't know but I think the author did a good job not just in the writing but also in the artwork of showing that while the while the wife Kazumi has rage issues and the husband has communication issues they clearly both want it to work Neither wants to give up. They want to keep going. The daughter, Ichika, on the other hand, also has struggles communicating, mostly because of the, fa the home life caused by her mom and dad. But it's very clear that she wants them to, well, she wants to help them out. She wants to do her own, in her own way, help the family survive, help the family get together help the family get through their problems. But she doesn't know how. Partly because she's a kid, partly because she has her own communication issues. And again, healing occurs. Healing little by little to understand her dad, little by little to understand her mom, and little by little to understand the people around her. And maybe, just maybe, this can all work. Maybe, one time, one day, the husband and father, the wife and mother, and the daughter will sit down at a table, finally talk things through, and finally be able to move forward as a normal, happy family. As of the time of this recording, the story is still ongoing, and I don't know. It seems to go be moving that direction. But I'm hopeful. Certainly not my feeling in the beginning, where I share the same opinions of their as the rest of the fandom, that they should split up. But for me, the author has successfully convinced me to give them a chance. Trust the process. Let them heal. It might be slow. It might be painful. 
It might be heartbreaking. But somehow, this family is worth keeping together. We just have to have faith that Reitaro, Kazumi, and Ichika can get through this as human as they are. Mm-hmm.